didn't see you here. Kind of late. Do you work here? Oh, just a camera fan. Well, this is the place for you. Me? I take George Eastman's advice and just press the button. But they sure do the rest around here. Nice and quiet now, but you ought to see it on a Friday noon when everybody and his brother wants a camera for the weekend. Tourist, Chevron, Graflex, Recomar, whatever style he or she prefers, the dollar a year member is sure to find a camera to his liking on the well-stocked shelves of this, the world's largest camera club. For many of its 10,000 members, the right to borrow is one of the most attractive features of the club. returned over 17,000 pieces of photographic equipment and not only for overnight and weekend use but often for vacations of several weeks duration. Miniature cameras have proved popular with those who wish to travel light and are looking for good pictures with a minimum of effort. Others prefer to record their holiday fun on movie film. In either case most of them will be back here sooner or later to borrow a projector or viewer from the wide selection available for loan. To round out the show he has planned for the eager audience back home, the family cameraman may decide to take along a few reels from the very extensive rental library of silent and sound films which the club maintains. The list includes cartoon novelties, professional travelogues, and subjects of general interest to appeal to all ages. And while we're on the subject, the club sponsors a regular series of top-notch movie programs throughout the winter season, featuring well-known lecturers and photographers such as Dick Bird, Robert Fryers, and Cliff Kamen. Movie nights are held in the large gymnasium at Kodak Park to accommodate the crowds who wish to attend. Bargain priced so that members may bring along their families and friends, tickets to these events go like hotcakes. The variety of available photographic equipment enables the beginner to try for himself many phases of photography before deciding which field appeals to him most. The advanced photographer, too, can try his hand at new experiences. Tripods and optopods, brownies and view cameras, flash guns and light bars, from auxiliary lenses to camera backs. Ask for it, and chances are pretty good that it's on the loan list. Seven full-time staff members take turns as loan desk attendants and make the beginner feel as welcome there as the president of the club himself. First, a little free instruction. Then off goes the happy borrower to put theory into practice. Good luck, old chap. If you get into difficulties, don't forget that the club lends instruction booklets, too. Besides a large stock of staple loan items, the club also has token quantities of the latest model cameras. This is particularly appreciated by the member who wants to try out a few different cameras before buying his own. 
However, it takes more than equipment to make good pictures. The darkest slide may bring back memories to its maker, but he will have to talk fast to convince others that this is a picture of a prize fishing catch. Or is it the family beside the Washington Monument? A proud father can say, that's my boy, head or not. But friends and neighbors will appreciate the advice of the bystander who says, brother, you don't need a projector. You need this. I guess there's something for everyone here. Elementary photography for the beginner and for the fellow who thinks he knows it all, there's still elementary photography. To increase the photographic knowledge of members, this fundamental purpose of the Kodak Camera Club is most directly implemented in the school program. Starting with simple demonstrations for beginners, the educational program of the club has gradually expanded during the years until now it requires the services of about 20 paid instructors who teach regularly scheduled evening courses in a wide variety of photographic subjects. Getting into this, for the beginner, may mean taking the elementary photography course, which includes lectures and demonstrations on basic camera use and darkroom techniques. Other elementary subjects offered are movie making, color exposure, and more technical subjects, such as photographic chemistry. To some students, increasing photographic knowledge gives value to hobbies or satisfies natural curiosity. To others, it is primarily a means of stimulating interest in their jobs. The company recognizes the genuine value of instruction they receive by refunding part of the tuition fee of any student who successfully completes a camera club course, just as it does for students at other recognized educational institutions. Lectures are supplemented by laboratory sessions in the many well-equipped darkrooms maintained by the club. Have you ever seen a darkroom? Dark, isn't it? Most people think of color printmaking as the province of the professional. For many years, the Kodak Camera Club has encouraged its advanced amateurs to explore this rewarding field. With experts available from a photographic community, the club has been able to offer both elementary and advanced courses in these exacting techniques. The hand coloring process illustrated here is known as flexichrome. It is unique in that the photographic image is prepared especially for absorbing the coloring dyes, and if the artist is dissatisfied with his results, he can replace one color with another at will. The dye transfer process, long a favorite of the professional illustrator, when mastered by club members, has been used to prepare prints for competitions, for home decoration, or even for Christmas cards. More recently, the making of color enlargements has been simplified with the introduction of the new Kodak color negative and type C paper, and courses in the printing and processing of these new color materials have been initiated to satisfy the demand of many interested club members. Any good Irishman knows that orange is no color for a decent man's tie, and any good flexichrome artist is able to adapt himself to the situation, correcting the aesthetic error. Ah, now Irish eyes can smile again. A battery of printing, enlarging, and print developing stations in community darkrooms is a solution to the problem of providing workspace for the club member who wants to make prints. While some darkrooms are reserved for students enrolled in the evening courses, others are open to any club member during weekdays from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Similarly, individuals may reserve studio facilities when they are not needed by scheduled classes. Thus, the photographer who lacks the necessary space for a darkroom at home or who needs special equipment may carry on his hobby in club facilities. Darkroom enthusiasts are provided with chemicals free or at very nominal rates and have access to the club's supply of free printing paper. 
Lunch hour may find one member using the club's mounting press to prepare his entries for a salon, and another in the darkroom processing rolls of film accumulated from his vacation. Evenings may find the student whose interest has been kindled by what he has learned in one of the black and white Brent courses trying out his new skills. Peak activity, period, is the pre-Christmas season, since every photographer's wife feels that photographic Christmas cards are the only kind to send. You don't always get the result you want the first time, but in photography there are tricks to get you out of difficulties. The camera doesn't lie, but what can happen in a darkroom would put Merlin to shame. For this expert, the problem calls for a retouching pencil. Artful dodger, isn't he? For such an expert, the rest is simple. With the negative he wants, the routine photographic operations of enlarging, developing, and fixing produce smiles all around. In photography, as in every hobby, success is a most satisfying reward. Into the wash tank goes the print to swim around for an hour or so while our friend goes off for a bite of supper. If he forgets to come back until tomorrow, he may find his masterpiece neatly laid on a drying rack, courtesy of the camera club staff. Increasing in popularity are the noon hour lectures which enrich the leisure time of a busy people. Although the sessions are necessarily brief, speakers and subject matter combine to inspire both novice and advanced worker. Programs may consist of PSA slideshows, travel pictures, or how-to-do-it sessions on unique aspects of photography. Typical of these latter is a demonstration of close-up nature photography by an established expert in that field. Such a man can give practical demonstrations with tricks and tips that often do not appear in written form. Setting and manipulating the camera, flash attachment, and focal frame is the photographer's job. Handling the subject is the naturalist field. Did you know that by keeping insects on ice prior to photographing, their motions are slowed so that you can handle and pose them and yet get a lifelike portrait just as the subject warms to normal temperature and activity. Fascinating for its own sake, photography, combined with another hobby, takes on richer meaning. The scientist can record or demonstrate a fact of nature. The gardener can preserve the beauty of quickly passing blooms. The stimulation of first-hand acquaintance with personalities who have successfully applied photography to other fields of interest is important to both the beginner and the expert. The several sections of the club often arrange such opportunities at regularly scheduled programs. In this case, meetings are held in the evening to permit greater participation. Going farther afield in both time and distance, a Saturday field trip to a nearby park adds to the variety of the nature section program. An experienced leader aids the group in finding places and subjects to photograph. With his help, beginners can make a start on a specialized phase of photography.
while advanced workers are spurring one another on to greater accomplishments by sharing their gadgets and know-how. The details behind a successful picture are those that do not show. Selection and placement of subject, removal of unwanted matter, and in some cases, improving on nature a bit, spell the difference between a snapshot and a picture. The actual pressing of the button is a small item in advanced photography. The cry of come and get it is hardly necessary with the aroma of freshly brewed coffee in the air. No small aspect of an outing is the coffee break, with the sociability it brings. Having a hobby in common, photographers find easy comradeship in the out of doors. In other seasons, the club may arrange a winter sports weekend or a fall foliage bus trip to encourage the social side of photography. Attendance at one of these activities quickly dispels any notion that the photographer is a solitary soul who rarely ventures from his darkroom. What's this? A pinball machine in the camera club? Monthly meetings held by various sections of the club frequently take the form of competitions where prints, slides, or movies are judged by a panel of three qualified judges according to the standard procedures recommended by the Photographic Society of America. Entrants are classified as beginner, advanced, or expert depending on their previous competition record, and liberal cash prizes are awarded to the winners in each class. Depending on his particular photographic interest, a member may participate in the activities of the pictorial print section, which works in both monochrome and color media. The nature section and the color section where members use the two-by-two two transparency as a means of expression. If he has two eyes, he may choose the stereo section. And if he just can't stand still, the cine section has a place for him. Much of the work of carrying out such an ambitious program is performed by elected officers and appointed committees of club members in the different fields of activity. However, the continuing presence of an enthusiastic permanent professional staff supplies the mainspring of effort and organization of club operation. Members are encouraged in their photographic efforts by a merit award system, which allows them to earn points for prizes won in section competitions like this one, as well as for recognition in outside events, such as PSA International Club competitions, acceptances in photographic salons, 
pictures selected for traveling shows, etc. Their progress is recognized by medals and trophies awarded in the annual spring banquet of the camera club. Service to charitable organizations and agencies outside of the club is likewise encouraged, although it receives no tangible rewards. During recent years, club members have been regularly donating color slides to veterans' hospitals. Others have used their free time to give instruction in photography to various youth groups, and some have acted as volunteer cameramen in preparing documentaries about the Boy Scouts. In these activities, as well as in the scheduled competitions, they help fulfill the primary purpose of the club, which is to promote interest in amateur photography. Get out of here before this photography bug gets me too.